workhouses, workhouses. I'm telling you now, it won't work. Workhouses are a waste of time, I'm telling you now. I've told you before, they're a waste of time, they won't work. I've told you before, I'll tell you again, it will not work. We weren't nearly there. We walked for another seven miles. It seemed that England had suffered from major poverty. Father had lost his job, so had half the population. We left a village that seemed to be dying slowly. No one could afford to pay for food. The workhouse was our last resort. passed and the situation eased. Admission to the workhouse had seemed like a prize when it opened at Christmas in 1841. But we were fated to be part of the second wave of inmates. The day we entered those workhouse gates was probably the worst day of my mother's life. My parents had grown up in a land filled with prosperity. My brother and I, we were testimony to that. But as we grew bigger, so did the mills, until finally they took away the livelihoods from thousands of spinning families, including my own. My parents were proud people. And the workhouse was the last place they would have asked for help. <coughs> but we had no choice. 
we had nothing left and nowhere else to go. We knew our family would be separated. But nothing could prepare me for my mother's reaction as we were taken away. It'll haunt me until I die in day. roof over our heads and food in our bellies. <laughs> Shut thy mouth, old little Jesse! But nothing on this earth can describe the lonely aching in my heart. To see just a glimpse of my family again. Nobody reaches up there. Times are looking up. I'm currently designing a workhouse for the Shaw Heath. A place for the local poor and needy. It's a great chance and I'm ready for the challenge. Good morning, Mr. Bowman. We have been commissioned by the Stockport Poor Law Union and they require the building to be split into four sections to divide men, women, boys and girls. They will be segregated as they enter. This to stop any complications which occur when families are together. We're wondering whether an octagonal layout will suit the job best. Morning, Mr. Bowman. Morning, Crowther. The windows will have to be high up, so even the tallest man can't see through. We wouldn't want any distractions, would we? They must be able to concentrate on their own lives. I can't wait to see the building realised.
just as our workhouse was opened, the government passed a new act, which caused uproar. Outdoor relief for the poor is to cease. Thousands are going to risk starvation. And here in Stockport, we're approaching chaos. So quiet, lass. I never hear you bellowing. Do you miss your mum? No. An elected board of 21 guardians finally established the Poor Law Union of Stockport with a workhouse at its centre. And that is where I find myself. We're encouraged to be self-sufficient we grow our own vegetables, run a bakery, a piggery. We've our own wash house and a blacksmith. My father's hands have become permanently cramped up and blistered from holding a hammer. He and the other men endure back-breaking daily work, breaking the stone, chopping the wood and the gruesome bit slaughtering our own livestock. But our guardians provided well for us. And even if the work was tiring, Way less. they had our best interests at heart. But meal times were occasions when we were reminded just how restricted our new life had become. The poor people who are able shall follow the master or mistress to church every Sunday. The men, women, boys and girls respectfully going two by two. And after divine service is ended shall return to this house in the same decent order without calling or staying anywhere by the way. Rule three, that they carefully avoid all contentions and quarrels among themselves, that there be no cursing and swearing, no reveling or bitterness amongst them, but they are to endeavour to live in love and unity together as becoming Christians, and by their mutual kindness and good offices do all they can to make one another easy and happy. Rule four. When I laid the plans for our workhouse, little could have prepared me for the events that followed. August 1842, over half of the local workforce was unable to earn a crust. A new machine called the mule could do the work of 100 stubborn spinners who weren't ready to give up their jobs. Several poor harvests left thousands starving and unable to afford even a loaf of bread. In total desperation, crowds took to the streets and raided mills and shops, but their final destination was the workhouse. Conditions in the workhouse were so harsh. Stay away from that window, girl. They became the terror of the poor. But for the inmates of Stockport's Bastille in 1842, it proved to be their salvation. My parents' decision to enter the workhouse probably saved our lives. 
Life in mill towns continued to be tough until steam power enabled them to flourish again. Occasionally, I hear tales of how friends suffered. And I think myself lucky. Lucky in the knowledge that I was saved from the deprivation that took many to their graves. and lucky in the knowledge that despite the sacrifices my parents made, they are now at peace with themselves. And just happy to be alive. Your tea, Mr Bowman, sir. Thank you. Lily, lovely to see you. Happy Christmas, lass. Be done worrying, lass. Sit thee down. And come and fill your belly with this nice bit of roast beef. Thank mm -hmm. you.